Uh, I just want to welcome you all to another episode of Morning with Pastor Wales. It's another beautiful Saturday. Uh, it's a great day. And you know, every day that we are alive is a new day that the Lord has made, and we'll be glad in it. So I want to rejoice with you all for being alive today. So we give glory to the Lord for that. I also want to thank God for all the humanity, all that God has been doing on your behalf, keeping you alive, making all things work out for you. So just want to invite you all to, I mean, I want to welcome you all to invite your friends and uh, maybe your family or your friends to just join the, the live streaming. Uh, don't let it be the only you that will be uh, interacting with it or listening or watching, something like that. But Take time, invite your friends, let them be part of our discussion today and also let them be part of this, uh, this program. So I will uh, take some few minutes and let you quickly do that. Invite, I mean, share the link if possible. I'm gonna be doing the same thing. <clears throat> yeah, gonna be doing the same thing, let's see. Yeah, and another good thing is that if you are if you are right there online, like joining our, our, our Facebook right now for the streaming, you can always uh, put in your name, type in something, comments. Uh, let's talk about the topic we have today. Let's dis talk. Let's discuss. Let's hear. Let me hear from your side, um, maybe your experience or, or your example of what we're going to be talking about today, what we're going to be discussing about today, and that will be great. So. Uh, Invite your friends, uh, be part of this uh, program right now. So if you are not, uh, if you are trying to do that, I'll probably give you some few minutes to quickly do that. You know, take some few minutes and invite your friends while we, we'll, while uh, I get myself ready here. I mean, uh, uh, while we get ready to pray, and then we go into what we need, want to discuss today. So. Like I said, happy Saturday to you all. It's a wonderful day. It's a beautiful day right here in Dallas. The weather is not so hot. It's it's good. It's not raining like the way it comes uh, and it rains sometimes. But everything's just beautiful today. So we thank God. It's not by our power. It's not by our mind. That all that things are like that. But God has uh, uh, is by the grace of God for us. So, His grace and His love towards us. So today we're going to be talking about what, what I, I, I just to choose a topic based on uh, what I've uh, uh, discussed with people. Not discussed, but uh, when I look at uh, questions that, uh, that people have asked me in the past and the way I see things also. You know, especially when it comes to believers' life in this in this. Uh, in this life that we live, you know, because as believers, we're living in a life that the Bible says we are not part of the life. Uh, we're living in a world that the Bible says we should not be uh, conformed to the world, but rather be conformed to Christ and revealing the glory of God. But nevertheless, we live in that world, and as we live in that world, there's much influence from both sides. Your world is trying to influence you, you're influencing the world, and not only that. The flesh is there to rouse you with, I mean, raise you with every one of us. You know, the flesh is always there to drag you into the things that are more important to the flesh, if I put it that way. So let's take a few minutes and let's, let's just pray. Mighty Father, King of King, Lord of Lord, uh, we thank you for today, another day that you've made, another beautiful day. Because we know everything you create are beautiful. So today is another day that you've made, you've created. We pray that, uh, that your presence be revealed in our life. We pray, O oh Lord, that as we discuss today, O oh Lord, that, uh, that, that your spirit minister to us. That not only that, that, that there be clarity, that there be uh, much understanding, O oh Lord. That there will be a change of attitude and mind to the things that we do that are not right. Thank you, precious Father. Thank you, Holy Spirit, that you have your way 
in our knees in the name of Jesus. And that I pray in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Like we always do, you know, have your coffee. I believe you have your coffee. Let's let's discuss over coffee. Yeah? I have mine already. So uh, also knowing that this episode is a uh, uh, episode sixty seven. It's been a long way. Well, uh, God has been good every every day. So today, I, I, I title uh, uh, um, uh, our discussion today. I title it, "Don't Do It." You can never out uh, outsmart God. See that? Don't do it. You can never outsmart God, and it's true. If you're trying to do that thing that you think is good for you, your flesh is dragging into it, but you also know that that thing you, you're trying to do, it's not the way of God. It's not what God expects from you. Not even God. It's not what your father, your, your earthly father expects of you. It's not what your brother, your mom will have expect of you. And you still find yourself doing it. Not that you find yourself doing it. You deliberately did it. Because you think you are smart. Because you think there's always a way around it. You know? That is the most dangerous part of things. There's a things that people do out of they don't have control over it. You know? It's beyond their power. They try, they try all and they still can't help themselves. They find themselves doing it. That is one thing. But there's another thing we, that, that's different from that which people do that they deliberately do it. If every step they're taking in doing that thing, they're being reminded in their mind that what you're doing is not right. You know, there's consequence for it. Or it may, it may affect other people. It may do this. And what you do is that you just neglect that thing. You press it down. You said, no, it's going to be my way. It's not going to be... I don't care what will happen to other people. I'm going to do it my own way. Then you can always repent. That's the attitude of people. Attitude of some believer to the things that they do. <laughs> Are you getting what I'm saying? So if if, if what I'm saying, it's, it's, if, if it's plain to your understanding or plain to understanding, or if you think you've come across something like this, I would like you to go ahead and post it on there. Post it right there in the in the on the comment. Just comment about it. Let me know if you you've seen something. I've seen it many times. Not only that I've seen it. I've talked to people. You know, I've counseled people over it. People ask me question about it, and I tend to tell them the right way. And sometimes they follow what I said. Sometimes they end up doing the way they want, and later come back and say. Oh, I'm sorry I did this way, but do you think God can still forgive me? <laughs> when you know that you have the understanding of what you're doing before you went to do it, you get what I'm saying? So people, people are like that. But is that the way we're supposed to live? Is that what God expects of us? Is that what we're supposed to, be port uh, to portray as believers? No. No. We're supposed to be doing the right thing at all costs, at every time. Are you getting what I'm saying? So, you know, let, 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 me, let me just read what I, I, I put down here. I said, people sometimes think they can ask smart God. And, and they, are, I, mean, take, I mean, taking God quietness, that's it. They're taking God quietness as an approver of their fleshy sin, and sinful action in life. They're taking God's quietness because there was there's no immediate reaction from God. There is no a kind of uh, God waking you up in the night and say, "Oh, you've done bad thing. Oh, you've done that which is not good." Or there is no immediate pressure in their heart that keep condemning them. Say, "Oh, oh, that you can't sleep. You know, they're making you wreck. Uh, I mean, they're giving you sleepless night because you've done that wrong thing." Because there is nothing like that doesn't mean that God approve of it. It doesn't mean God has accepted your way of doing that thing that is wrong. And so you become, 
you become somebody with new idea. Oh, yeah. I think God wants us to do it this way. Because God will react to your own. And you begin to now push that thing to other people. Making them to go the same way you go. To, to, to commit the same thing you commit because there was no disapproval immediately from God. For, to, I mean, there's no uh, disapproval in a kind of reaction, physical reaction that you can hold on to or that you can see that, oh, God disapproves of this action. <clears throat> Are you with me? I don't know if you, if you, if you've seen something like that, but these are things that happen in many of many people's life every now and then. They take an action because there is no immediate reaction from God. They push in and do more. And if they take that action as a believer, they just believe, oh, God has accepted it. It's a new way. It's a way that God wants. And what happened? They push you to the church. What happened? Some people can even package that same thing and start preaching about it. Instead of coming, instead of coming to agreement to themselves that say, oh, this thing I've done is not aligning with the word of God. I've done the wrong thing. And they go repent of it and change. But because there's no immediate reaction from God, <clears throat> they look at it as the right way. And then do the same thing that the devil always do. What the devil do? The devil wants to do something that is that, that he knows is not right. What did he do? He bring more people, more people to do the same thing. So that he can always be, I'm not the only one. You know, there are people doing the same thing. I don't know if you've seen um, people like that, believers like that do that thing. Once they do that thing wrong, they find more people to do it and agree on it. And change the way people think to accept that thing as being the right thing. Because in a small, many people can buy to it. In a small, you can push it out, and people say, "Oh, yeah, 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 it's another way." You know, you know, they can ration it and, and think, think it, think it through, and say, "Oh, yeah, we think it's, 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 it's the right thing. It's the right thing to do." <clears throat> and then they start, they start accepting it. And you know what? Some people that do not know. The right thing I say that just look at people who are supposed to know the right thing and hold on to what they say and believe what they say. Those kind of people, that kind of people and those kind of category of people, they will do what? They will run with that thing. They will take that thing as fact and they will run with it. And what when they run with it, what they're gonna do? They're gonna spread it all. Spread it all. Push it all to other people. Let them know that's a new way. That's a new way. But they forget that there's always the wrath of God. And there's always the consequence of what they do. <clears throat> we know, I've seen people also, that like you see, after a long time, they push that such thing, and after a long time, they come to, to repent. And when they repent, the other people that have gone the same route with them, those ones are not repenting because they didn't know that you that started that wrong idea, you already repented. Even when you repented, you're not letting them know that you walk, you, you walk that way wrongly and they need to change and follow the right thing. They are, they are, they are, they are, they are, they are part of the wall of God. I mean, there's a way that Jesus put it in the wall of God that explaining that really make us feel, yeah, there is consequence for that. Yeah, that is not the way of God because it, much is expected from us. There's one other thing I say. I say, time and time, I've seen people who know better, you see, better as believers in every area of life. I've seen them who understand better. They understand what the word of God said about sin, about disobedience, about what God expects from them. But they still, they still go ahead and deliberately continue to do those things. And, 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 and they resolve, you know, they, they, they have tend to resolve into being reactive 
rather than being proactive to sin, to disobey, I mean disobeying God, and to fulfilling the fleshy desire of their heart. I mean, the, the, the fleshy desire of their, of their heart in life. That fleshy thing, that which the desire of the flesh, that they end up fulfilling. We have, as, I mean, we as believers, we need to be proactive, not just being reactive to it. Being reactive would be in the sense that, oh, you do it, and you see that it's wrong, and you now, I mean, you know it's wrong, you did it, and you're now coming to God to forgive you of what you've done. You are reacting to what you've done. You've just been reactive to it. But God wants us to be in a position of being proactive. Proactive in the sense that take measure, take uh, uh, take pro, uh, a kind of proactive measure, take a, a, a way to stop yourself, to resist that thing, a way to, to make you not to do that thing from the start. You know, be on top of it. <clears throat> be ready for it. Uh, there is one other part in the Bible that, Jesus, uh, that, uh, that the Bible said that uh, this I said, flee. I think it was Paul. He said, flee from every appearance of sin. Flee. <laughs> flee from every appearance means don't wait to negotiate with it. Don't wait to start looking at, oh, I can do it this way. I can do it. Don't begin to dress it up. Just, you come this way, you go this way. Flee from it. Or how many is fleeing from, from the appearance of sin? No. We have, we have in our own time, we are more interested in dressing the sin, in managing the sin. We are more interested in looking at it and making it look, I mean, making it look better because that's what will benefit you in relating to the war. Or that is what, or you can get a, a, a kind of advantage, you know, temporary, if I would say, temporary benefit from it. And that temporary benefit, you're still going to pay for it if you quite, if you, if you have full understanding. But if you don't have the whole understanding of what God can do, you will think, oh, yeah, you're benefiting. But that benefiting is temporary because God is going to still ask you of that thing. God is already put measure. To ask for what you do. To require of you why that thing is done. So there's always consequence of everything in life. There's nothing that you think, oh, I've done it. Let's forget it. You know, people always say that. Yeah, I've done it, I've done it. Let's move on. Yeah, you can move on, but there is consequence from God. So, as believers, we need to weigh those consequences very well. Because those consequences may not be things that, that uh, dramatically uh, bad immediately now. It may be things that take time before it comes. But surely, it will come. Surely, it will come. So, what do you expect? What do you expect? I mean, what is expect of you now? What is expect of you now is to be reactive to those things. I mean, sorry, to be proactive to those things. Not to wait and be reactive to it. You don't need to start reacting. You need to be proactive so that you don't allow that thing to come. You know? So the consequence will come regardless of what you do. But the good thing, the, 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 the thing that God has put in there is that when we, when we ask for forgiveness, the Bible says He's more than able to forgive us our sin and cleanse us from every unrighteousness. That's what he said in the book of Believe, 1 John, um, chapter 1, verse 9 or 7, and, and 7 to 9, or something like that. You know, that he's more than able to cleanse us from every unrighteousness. But that cleansing and forgiving and all that is to say, is for the saving of the soul, the saving of our soul. The consequence of what we've done, we will get it. The consequence will come. It will come in big time, in real time. It may not be immediately, maybe with time, but it's going to come. So, 
Why do we have to wait? Why do we have to go through things that we know there will be consequence for? If, if somebody sin and deliberately sin and commit uh, 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 and come back to repent from God, yeah, God will forgive. But that is for the saving of that person's soul. But the consequence of the sin is waiting. That one cannot be taken away. You have to face it. So, when we are able to see that ahead of time, I think that will not allow us to go into doing such, you know, or taking such a, a, a action that we know will be uh, a problematic for us in the past, I mean, in the time to come, in the future. So, let's look at something. Um, let's look at what the Bible says. I think I, I really love this part because... Uh, Jesus talked about salvation and he began to reflect it and he began to, I mean, analyze it much better, explain it more better to the disciples. I think it's, uh, let's look at uh, Luke, uh, Luke 12. That's right. Luke 12. Luke 12. When we look at Luke 12 from verse, uh, I would say for, uh, verse 48, but for us to really understand it, for us to really understand it, it will be much better for us to look to, to look at it before uh, 48. Okay. Look at it. Let's look at 41. From 41. That would be good. Where, where, where Jesus talked about the unfaithful servant. Look at it. Uh, after he has talked about that, um, after he has talked about after he has spoken to the disciple about the parable, oh, now he now uh, explained to them. Peter, and 41 said, Then Peter said unto him, Lord, speaketh thou this unto us, or even to all? I mean, this parable unto us, or even to all? And the Lord Jesus said, he said, Who then is that faithful and wise steward? Who is Lord shall make rulers over his household to give them their portion of meat in due season. You know, he has told them uh, the parable of the of the faithful servant. Uh, I mean of faithful servant. And so he's asking them this question. He said, and he goes ahead and said, Bless is that servant okay blessed is that servant whose who is lord when a common shall find shall find so doing okay or a truth of a truth i said unto you that he will make him ruler over that he hath but if that servant say in his heart, my Lord, delayed, that means it will take the time to come. So my Lord, delayed, is coming and shall begin to, to beat the men's servants and mates and, and to eat and drink and to drunk. To drink and to, I mean, to drink and to be drunk. The Lord of the servants. Okay, the Lord of Sarah will come in a day when he look not for him. Agree. And at an hour when he is not aware, and will cut him in sunder. Okay, and will appoint him his portion with the unbelievers. Did you see? That means he will lose all and it will be it will be counted as an unbeliever. And seven, uh, for the seven said, and that servant which knew his law will will and prepare not himself, neither did according to his will shall be beaten with many straps. Okay. But he that knew not and did commit, I mean he that knew not and did commit things worthy of strife shall be beaten with few straps. 
For unto them or unto whomsoever much is given. That's what God. What much is given, he said. He said, uh, much is given. He said, of whom shall he much require? And to whom men has committed much, of him they will ask more. So, Jesus, in, in trying to uh, explain better the, the, to his this, uh, disciples concerning the, the unfaithful servant parable that he told them, you know, you can read about that. But this part I'm trying to, to talk, uh, to just add to what we're saying to our discussion, is that Jesus said, this servant that know what the, uh, uh, what the, 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 the master's will is, this servant that have full understanding of what is wrong and what is right. This servant that have full understanding of what is not to be accept, what is not acceptable and what is acceptable. But regardless of that, he still went ahead and do it. And regardless of that, he still went ahead and commit all those things. He said, he will be beaten. Much will be required. When, when, when he said, to whom much is given, much is also required, means you as a believer, you have the understanding the, that the unbeliever don't have. So much is expected of you. That is what. You as a leader, you as somebody that have understand, you've studied the word of God, you know, you have some good understanding. You've listened to, to messages, you've listened to, to, to sermon, you 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 listen to some teaching, you have good understanding. Even if you don't listen to those things, you've read the word of God yourself. You study. You know what is right, what is expected of you, what God is not expected of you. And then you still go ahead and begin to manipulate the word of God or trying to see, think that you are smart and picking the things that you know, oh, I can use this to ask smart God. I can still do it this way, you know, looking for loop oh, because that's what some people do. Let me give you an example. I, I, I don't know, maybe m many of you have seen it. Over here in America, in this state, when the law is passed, okay, when the House or the Senate, maybe they already passed the law and the, the President signed it into law and that thing has been the law, something like that, okay? They know what the law is. I mean, the people know what the law is. But there's some people who will now go through that law, they go through those requirements, they go to what is expected, and you know what? They'll begin to look for the loophole to infringe on that law. They look all to infringe on that law in a way that will not make them feel that they are infringing on the law. On the law, that means they look for a legal way to still disobey that law or commit that law, infringe on that law, without them, you know, looking as if they deliberately, I mean, they 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 they, they commit, I mean, they infringe the law. The people that do that, they. They will research all those things. And you know what? When they do it, when they find the loophole, they are not going to keep quiet and start doing it in a hiding way. No. You will see that they'll put it on there. They will start marketing it. Oh, meet this lawyer. We can take this. We can take care of this for you. You know, we can do it legally for you. And that legally, they're saying, is that they are infringing on another law, which they know. I mean, they, they're looking for a way around the law to infringe on that law to commit that thing without infringing. You know what I mean? Something like that. That is man ways of thinking. That's my way of trying to say they're smart. And you know what? They do it. They make a lot of money about it. They know, oh, this is what the law say. But you know, you can do it this way and you know actually mean you're, you're, you're infringing on the law so you can still defend yourself. Why don't you just obey the law? Why don't you just obey it outright? Are you getting what I'm trying to say? So the same way people bring that kind of idea in their living, in their as a believer, or they, they, they tend to do that. They look at the word of God. They see what the Bible says. 
and they begin to look at the way around to do some of those things to commit it and they begin to defend it and defend themselves. They commit those things, they do those things which they know. Take for instance now, some people know they are extremely lying. And you know what? They will, they will look around and pick up the word of God and say, yeah. And you know, the word of God also say this. So it's not actually me that you are lying. You're just trying to be more, you know, alternative to the truth. You get what I'm trying to say. How long should we begin to do this? How long are we going to be in this situation? How, are we, how long are we continuing to do this as believers? We think we're smarter than God. No, we are not smarter than God. You see, God's long suffering is so much that He continues to watch on people, continue to watch, He continues to see, He continues to give us more opportunity to change our way, to change our ways, to change our ways. And then, when we continue in that track and we refuse to do that, then his wrath will come. Haven't we read? Read the Old Testament. Read the Word of God. How God took the Israelites out of Egypt. He did everything. And along the line, they continue to move away from what God expects of them. And God keep telling, change your way. Do it right, do it right. And after some time, what did God do? The wrath of God come upon them. And then God also hold back and change his way to them. And begin to allow them, draw them back onto them, up to him also. Do you think God has changed? We know God is an unchangeable God. His ways has always been his ways. When he says something in, 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 in 2,000 years ago, that same thing is still saying it now. What I'm simply saying is that don't let us begin to play as if we're, we're smarter than God. That's what people do. Let me give you another example. Uh, I was talking to somebody. This one is just, it, it's not really of that, but it, it's, it's still in line. Um, Somebody uh, 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 can't sell any if I say or trying to answer the question of someone. And this person was more defensive of, oh, pastor, what did, what did, what did the Bible say if somebody just died without knowing God? Can't we pray and make that person be able to go into the kingdom of God and meet heaven? <laughs> like, what kind of question are you asking? The Bible already give us all the chance that we need on earth. Even give us that chance to, if you are still breathing, if you are still alive, if you can still talk, if you can still believe, even with all you've done from beginning to the end of that minute, if you at that last minute still say yes, you're willing to receive Christ and accept Christ into your life, God will still forgive you and you can still make heaven regardless of what you have done. But the point is that once you close your eyes, once the bread is gone, there is no way, there is no prophet, there is no man of God or woman of God, there is no anointing that can come and pray that sinful dead person into heaven. It's just gone, it's gone. <laughs> you see, our prayer does not reach out to the person that is gone. Our prayer is only for the living. The prayer for the dead, the Bible makes us to know that their works go before them. Their work, their prayer, or whatever it is in their soul, it's already packed into their works. And that works go before them. If that work is good, if it can sustain the, the fire of God, yeah, good. But if not, the fire consumes it, the work is, there's nothing to show off, then the person it doesn't make it. So what I'm trying to say is that <clears throat> now when I look at that, let me clarify that part. You know, when the work go and it, and it's still consumed, that doesn't mean the soul cannot still be saved because the work like that is mostly for believer who has been saved but have done great work that require. I mean that that require God, you know, crowning that 
uh, uh, so that person the the, 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 the crowns of, of stars okay so uh, to just clarify that so what I'm trying to simply say is that the person was trying to be sure or find out that he believed or he or she believed that somebody that died as a sinner can still be prayed for even when he's dead so that he can get into heaven I said no you're gone you're gone so whatsoever you want to do you have to do it right here on earth you have to do it while you are alive you see so what am I trying to say is that people always look for ways to see that oh why can I still do this can't I still do this can this not be possible and that's the way some, some people's attitude to the wall of God attitude to the wall of God and trying to look for ways to ways it to come to to, to, to walk around what God said the way to walk around what God said that they know that they just need to obey or rather to obey what God said they want to walk around it are you getting what I'm saying they want to walk around it that's not what God expects of us that's why he said to whom to whom much is given from what we just read last night on uh, Luke chapter 12 verse 48 you know Jesus said at the end of that he said for unto whosoever much is given of him shall much be required as a, as a preacher much is given unto you you have, have great understanding not only that the anointing has caused great thing in your life the Spirit of God is quickening you to do great things. So much is expected of you. What that may not be expected of somebody that is just that, that doesn't know nothing yet. Somebody that is just giving his life to Christ. What is expected of that is different from what is expected of you. Because to you, you've walked with the Lord. You've walked with the anointed. You've utilized it. You've manifested it. And much understanding has been given to you. So then, what you do then is that you are trying when you when you know those things and you're still trying to walk around it. That means you are trying to think that you can ask smart God. So let's look at it that way. That's why I put it like like I said. I said don't do it. Just don't do it. Don't do it. You can never ask smart God. Don't do it. Just do the right thing. Because when you do it, when you do it, the consequence of what you do can bring the wrath of God not only unto you but even unto your generation to come unto your children and children because you knew what you were doing and you did it and God waited for you and you know when God come God will not say oh you did it now I'm going to deal with you now he has a way to come in his own time not your time not on your timetable. God will come in his own time and require those things. Let me give an, an example of myself long time. One of the things that make me to be more, more I mean, careful and more, um, more careful and more vigilant into holding on to the things of God, doing things rightly, you know, our experiences in life will always also be a benefit, a benefit to us going forward. Not to think about, but to go forward. What we've experienced that are good or bad sometimes become a benefit to us to do more things better. Okay? Long time. Just a second. A long time. Uh, is there any Okay, there's still some of you there. Don't forget to put I mean to post in there don't so forget to comment okay you all, don't forget to comment as you listen or, or, or be part of uh, this discussion today okay so long time long time uh, when I was a young believer when I was a young believer I did something you know I committed kind of you know a kind of fleshy sin and that, when, when you look at that scene, then it wasn't something that uh, I would have said initially. I mean, it's something that people 
every people, I mean, many people will easily want to commit. And not only that, you people look at that thing as a it's a way of life, it's lifestyle, it's it's not really it's not supposed to be something you think is sinful per se, even though by Bible category categorically say it's sinful, okay? But people look at it as a way of life, you know, people do it, you know, something like that. But as a believer, it's not supposed to be. But you know what? It's a casual thing that I, I, I used to do before I become born again. So being born again, it continues. Even though I say, oh, I need to stop this kind of behavior, I need to stop this, you know. But it continue. To the extent that, you know, as at that time when I, when I got born again, I got a big encounter, you know, because the way God encountered, it made me, you know, it, it, it was so powerful. And so, so uh, uh, the anointing was upon me, you know, God was doing awesome things, you know, uh, in every, even when I pray, this manif in me, instantaneous manifestation of the, of the power of God, the signs and wonder following me, and I'm like, who? You know, to me, it was new to me because uh, even though I've been going to church, but I wasn't born again then. But at that time, I got born again, and this new move of God began to, you know, be new in me. But I still continue with those kind of behavior. Some, you know, most of those things that I do that is not right, I, 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 I don't really do that. But this one particular behavior still continue. And so, and so, one of those days, I still end up, come, I mean, doing that kind of, still behaving like that. And then, after this, my mind said, ah, you need to stop this, this is not right. Well, I keep struggling, I want to stop it, and I keep doing it, I want to stop it, I keep doing it. I say, oh Lord, here, yeah, help me, I'll, do, I'll stop it, I'll do it again. Then, another time I find myself doing it. Oh, you know what happened? The Bible, the Bible, listen, it's what I'm saying, real life, real, real life story. The Bible flip, the Bible flip, when I take the Bible to read at, at the church or just doing Bible study at home, each time I carry the Bible, the Bible will just flip. It will flip to that place of what I was doing that is wrong. I like, hmm. I will, I'll say, oh Lord, you know, forgive me. Oh, this is not right. Okay. Then, you know, because I say, Lord, forgive me, I think everything is okay. So I, 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 I was continue my reading and all that. Again. Try to be good. Then, another time, I find myself doing it again. I said, oh no. Then, I was about studying, you know, because nearly every other day, you know, if I don't study my Bible, because as a young believer, you want to, you want to study every now and then. When I'm reading, or when I go to church, when I pick up the Bible again, like just pick up your Bible like this, and when I just pick up the Bible and try to open, boom, it will open to the same place. I'm like, ah, what is this? Then, I continue another time you know so this stuff continue every now and then not always you know it takes some time then one day which I, I think it would have been maybe about six or seven times I think it was on the seventh time then no but before that I think maybe only like six times or, or fifth time when I found myself doing behaving like that again what did I do when I want to open the but now I know that if I open the Bible, the Bible will flip to that place. So what did I do? I tried to, since I, I now locate where the portion is in the Bible, I'll try to open, when I put my Bible down, I want to open, I'll open the Bible from the top. Because I know it's in the, that portion was in the New Testament. So I'll try to open from the Old Testament, thinking that I'm smart. Thinking that, you know, I can still walk around it. You know? So, but the point is that, it's still a, a kind of little struggle. Every now and then, even, so God is moving in you to do certain things. I'm trying to tell you, our God totally break me down. That nothing of such thing can move me anymore. Or nothing of those things that make me to be more different in the way I look at things in life. You know, I'm talking about, 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 about 25 years ago. Or more than that. So, 
Then one day, I, uh, the, or the last time, I find myself doing the same thing. And that day, the Bible still opened up to me. The Bible still opened up to me. But you don't want it. The next day, the enemy comes like a flaw. It was some kind of warfare that I've never seen in my life. It was some kind of even demonic attack from different levels, if I would look at it that way. It was a lot of things. It was like, see, <clears throat> when I see, when I see the floodgate of, of hell just open against me. And I became more sober and said, ah, Lord, ah, you know, this level is like you are your own. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, you are your own. But somehow, you know, grace, God's grace is always great. And His love is everlasting. When God chooses to love you, he, he love you. Once He chooses to love you, He just love you. And I believe God loves you. He loves every one of us. And out of the love of God, even for my understanding at that time, that I know that, uh, that, that I keep behaving the thing God to expect me to behave. So it's like I'm disobedient one way or the other then. And then, taking out smart by opening the wall, trying to be all those kind of stuff. But then, I know God is still a merciful God. So I reach out to his merciful. I mean, reach out to his love and his merciful God. Not ready to, to even begin to attack the devil or this kind of stuff. You know, just like the way David did. You know, when it gets to a, le a level, when David commits different kind of sin, when it gets to one level, at that time, when, when God told, I mean, when God sent his servant to him to make him realize what he did, you know, David didn't tend to begin to say, oh, when, when, it, when the consequence of that thing is about to come. He didn't start saying, oh, he want to fight the devil. No, he was just talking to the Lord. He said, Lord, I prefer to fall into your hand than fall into the devil. Because the devil will come like a lion, like a worry lion. It will tear you down. It will tear you to pieces. But when you are in God's right, when God is the one dealing with you, it's a more better because what? He is a merciful God. And so, <clears throat> you know, like I, uh, what I'm saying is that what I was doing, what I was doing then, even though I didn't tell you about it, I've said it sometimes ago in one of my preaching. But whatever I'm doing, it was like a casual thing. Many other people do it, okay? But it's wrong. It's not the way of God. It wasn't the way of God, especially for believers. So, what happened? God came in his merciful way. And his hand, by his right hand, he uphold me. And then, he dealt with the enemy. He dealt with the devil. He dealt with the work of the devil. But at that time, after that time, he touched me and totally changed everything in my life. So, when I see what God said that is wrong, that he said is wrong, you know what it is that is wrong, and you know what the consequence could be. So you don't dare cross those lines. And you get what I'm saying? <clears throat> but what I'm trying to say also, <clears throat> it doesn't need to get to that level for many of us, you know? So as believers, we need not to be trying to outsmart God, but rather being proactive in our offensive against sin against disobedience, against the work of the devil, against the fleshy things that could draw you away from God. So I, I want you to think twice on that. You know, look at it. I know every one of us, we have a wanting or the other that we've done in life or one way or the other that we know um, our attitude, our behavior may not be right, that we need to change. So try to change it. Don't follow what people do because Many of them, when they do certain things and they keep defending it, let me, let me put it this way. <clears throat> I know the way to analyze people's behavior, especially when it comes to preachers who tend to defend certain things. I know the way to analyze it. One of the ways to analyze it is to know that 
what they are mostly defensive of, just be, be sure that majority are committing those things. They're committing those things, and that's why they're defensive of it. I tell you, yeah, they're defensive of it because they're committing it. What I mean by defensive of it, when, they, when you say this attitude is not there, they keep defending that attitude. They keep saying, oh, that attitude is not bad. Oh, it's not this. It's not this. Oh, that thing is not, it's not bad. It's not that. Just be sure that somehow they're falling into the same thing. I've seen, I've seen, I've seen many. I've seen, see people, when you see, let, let me give you another example. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me give you another example before I round up. Yeah. This could be another good example. There's one day, long time, I'll say it's a long time. There's this man of God. When, you know, when we start doing, I uh, start doing like a kind of chat room, um, a ministry over uh, Skype, in, um, um, Google, uh, is it Yahoo? Yahoo, yeah. Yahoo chat, all this kind of stuff, you know. For a long time, I've been, I've been ministering on over internet for many people around the world. So we're doing that. And this man of God was one apostle like that. And he's somewhere in, uh, it's somewhere in America, but not, I think it's up north, somewhere, maybe um, around North New York, Maryland, and somewhere there. <clears throat> and this man was in my chat room. So when we talk, you know, he will come. He, he always talk like a, as a uh, as a somebody in the ministry, and I mean somebody as a in the ministry and give his own advice, talk from his own angle, and all that all kind of stuff. And it was good, but I just found out that every time when they raise the wall, the things that has to be with that has to do with alcohol that has to do with the consumption of alcohol. This man keep defending it, keep defending it, keep talking about it. I said, ah. You know, I'm not saying drinking alcohol is sinful because the Bible don't say all that as a kind of sin. You know, yeah, I understand. I'm not saying yeah, your, your uh, alcohol, if when you take it, is sinful. But the point is that the Taking the, the, the overconsumption of those things is not good. Anything that is not good becomes sinful to you. It's as simple as that. Or not only that, it's not going to allow you to have a good relationship with God. So if alcohol is slowing you down from having a good relationship with God, do you need to consume it? Do you need to continue to consume it? Because when you consume it and you, over, and you react in it, that means the alcohol, you become alcoholic or you, 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 you begin to misbehave or the alcohol have influence on you, then you will not be in your right mind with God. Is that good? No. So those things are so simple like that. So for the fact that God in, in the Bible didn't say that in his sin, his sin doesn't mean you have to do it. So that was my angle. But the angle of this person was just defending it. He will quote this from this Bible, he will quote this Bible verse to just defend the alcohol. Then I said, and I asked him, you know, I noticed you've been so defensive of this, but I want you, can you tell me your experience with this? Have you taken it before? Have you do this? Have you do that? And then he now say, um, you know, Pastor, I, I don't, I don't, it's not that I, I, I don't really take alcohol, but you know, uh, uh, the doctor recommended for me as a kind of things for treatment, so that's why I have to take it. I have to take it every now and then. I have to do I say, oh man, you see what I'm trying to say. Instead of you to say, oh, I'm having a medical issue that I know God, I'm trusting God for a total healing on it, or God to intervene, but also I'm using this as a, but I'm not, as a way of treatment, but you know, I'm not encouraging you, if you want to live as a believer, if you want to be close to God, I'm not encouraging you as a way of you consuming that and still being in a relationship that you expect with God. That would have been much better, you know, that would have been much better. But rather, because that thing is doing it, so it begin to defend it in every area. And I pick up that, that uh, kind of behavior 
as not being good because that's the way people do and people are still doing it right now right now the moment they do something or they find themselves as a, as 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 their, as their selfish selfish i mean selfishness drag them into that kind of thing and they have they, they, they have committed it, they have done it, what did they do? They just begin to bring it into church and say, hey, you know, it doesn't mean, yeah, it's the way God is, it's the way of God, or you know, something like that. Or drive those things as a, as a thing that God accepts because they didn't see any sharp disapproval from God. For anything you commit, there's not going to be a sharp disapproval from God. Because God is not going to be coming, chasing you up and down, that you, you commit this, you do this, you do that. No. His word has been yesterday, today, and forever. His word has been there. The word will judge you. His word will judge you. His word will always be active to your action. That's it. It's not God that will say, oh, you just do it now, and so I'm going to come and deal with you. No. The word of God will always react to your action. If your action is bad, the consequence of that action, the world will bring it as a reaction to what you do. So that's what we need to know. So um, um, let's keep it there. Uh, like I say, if you have anything to add to what I'm talking about, that would be great. But I want you to know that it's much better for all to be obedient than trying to look for a way to disobey God and still believe and still have it as if we are right, that, that we can, we, we, we are still good, you know, to defend it, you know, it's not right that way. Look at, uh, before, a random look at what the Bible also say, I believe in the book of, uh, in the book of uh, Samuel, that's right, let's look at Samuel. Samuel, Samuel, uh, uh, first Samuel, chapter 15, verse 22 say, and Samuel said, as the law has great delight in bond offering, in bond offering and sacrifice, as in obeying the voice of the law, was the question. And no. Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice, and to hearken than the fat of ram. Yeah. To be obedient is more better than sacrifice. It's been better than saying coming around and trying to look for ways. It's just better just obey God and let it go. You know what I mean? So, like I said, it will be much better for us as believers to push what is right. Not to start looking for loophole. Not to start looking for a way to, to, to still commit that sin and believe. We are right committing it and then continue to use that to spread the same thing to others. You know? And that's what we're facing in our, in, in this very time. For the past years now, you've been seeing people all around defending something that is defenseless. Defenseless. But what did they do? They try to drag it into the wall of God. They try to drag it into, into a Christian wall. And start saying, oh, when you don't do this, it's showing that as if, you, you know, let's, let's give you an example, like a, an example of, of, you know, using marks. I saw one uh, uh, post one day, one uh, article of a man that was even defending and said, do you think God will use marks? And do you think Jesus will use marks? How, how would you be asking that kind of question? Jesus is God. Jesus is a healer. He 